Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. You can also use the promo code MTGMUDSTA for 5% off your orders from Face to Face Games, Canada's largest Magic the Gathering store, with qualified orders getting free shipping Canada wide. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic goblin gang. As of this video, there's about 48 hours left on my Playmat Kickstarter campaign. If you want in on this exclusive offer, not to mention a chance to get some dice, tokens, and a coin, be sure to sign up before it's too late. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game was another one filmed in my studio during my birthday stream. It's a fun one, because all of us are playing Ramos Dragon Engine. We've each built it in a different way, and it'll be interesting to see if you can figure out which version each of us is playing. As with most studio games, I don't record the opening hands, but Nick does win the die roll and start us off. He plays a polluted delta, sacrificing it and losing one to find a land. MJ plays a tap spar headquarters and passes to me. Speaking of triomes, I play a Savai triome and pass to Max. Max also plays a kind of triome with Rafine's tower, which comes in tapped and he passes. Nick unfortunately is slowing us down, and he laments playing fetch lands for making him shuffle. He puts out a Ketria Triumph for his fetch, and we then move to his turn. Nick draws, and plays a Hinterland Harbor. He then pays a blue and a green to cast Zimone, Quandrix Prodigy, and passes to MJ. MJ draws, and plays a Badland for their turn, and then pays two for three visits. They go and find a Triumph to put to field, and pass. I just play a tap Steam Vents, passing to Max. Max plays a tap Zagoth Triome and passes to Nick. Turn 3 for Nick has a Swamp coming in, and he casts a Cure as Follower. I'm starting to wonder if it's just Simic Ramos at this point in the game, and he passes to MJ. MJ draws, plays a Mountain, and then casts Kalamax, passing to me. I also have a Hinterland Harbor for my turn and then tap 3 mana to cast a Lifecrafter's Bestiary, passing to Max. Max plays a Swamp and casts a Rootweaver Druid while I show off my Alter Sleeve Ramos. Max then gets a trigger from the Druid and asks us if we want to go and find some basics, and we all say no, denying Max anything. At the end of turn, Nick then activates Simone to put out a land from his hand. Nick draws and plays a Mountain. He casts his copy of Ramos, and passes to MJ. MJ has a Scrubland for turn, and is able to pay 5 mana for Marari's Wake. Moving to combat, Kalamax hits me, and I take 5, and MJ passes. I just keep playing tap lands, as a Ketria Triome comes in tapped, and I pass to Max. Max has a Rogren Triome, which also comes in tapped, and drops a Shaman of Forgotten Ways. He passes to Nick. Apparently tap lands is the theme of this game, as Nick drops a Seaside Citadel for turn, which does come in tapped. However, he uses Cure's Follower to untap it, and then casts an Idyllic Tutor. This gives Ramos a plus one plus one counter, and Nick goes to find Fable of Wolf and Owl, which apparently he'd built the deck around. MJ draws for turn, and plays their polluted delta, cracking it and losing one to find a tropical island. MJ then needs only tap three lands to cast Melek, and reveals the top card, which is a Saltai Charm. Kalamax then goes at Max, who blocks with his very expensive costing 2-1. I scry one and bottom it thanks to the bestiary. I play an Endatha Triome, being super slow this game, and pass to Max. Max plays a Wooded Foothills, and taps enough to bring out his copy of Ramos. With the commander on the stack, Nick uses Quandrix Command to counter it, and gives his Ramos more counters both from casting the spell, and using the mode of the spell that'll do it. 
Max then cracks his wooded foothills, losing one to find a land. At the end of turn, MJ casts Sultai Charm and picks the mode of destroying an artifact. They get a copy of the spell because Calmax is tapped and blow up my best Yuri and Ramos, and we then move to Nick's turn. Nick draws and just casts his enchantment, Fable of Wolf and Owl, passing to MJ. MJ draws and reveals Azorius Charm off the top. They then cast their Ramos and go to combat. Melek goes at Max, while Kalamax once more finds his way at my face, and we each take the hits, and MJ then passes. My turn has me drawing, and then playing an overgrown tomb, taking two so it comes in untapped. This gives me exactly enough mana for Ramos, which I cast, and pass to Max. Max plays an Expedition Watery Grave, taking two so it comes in untapped. He then casts Widespread Thieving, and gets to hide away one of his top five cards. With nothing else, he passes turn. In what I think is a pretty spicy move, Nick taps the follower to untap MJ's Kalamax, and then moves to his turn. Nick then draws, and plays a tapped Path of Ancestry. He casts Simic Ascendancy, and gets a green wolf and a blue bird token thanks to his fable. He then uses the follower to untap the path, and casts a Crystallization targeting Kalamax. MJ responds to this by casting Azorius Charm off the top, then putting two plus one plus one counters onto their Ramos, and getting a copy of the spell from Melek. They pick the mode to draw, but before letting it resolve, they reveal their next top card, which is Dromoka's Command. They cast that off the top, picking the mode to force Nick to sacrifice an enchantment and get a copy of it. This has Ramos getting two plus one plus one counters, and Nick sacrifices the enchantments, and then MJ finally resolves the Azorius Charm, drawing two. They then reveal Sunforger off the top, and Crystallization then finally resolves onto Kalamax. This is all during the end step, and Nick finally passes, and wanting to get in on the end of turn action, Max uses Bant Charm to take out MJ's Ramos. MJ draws, and reveals a Chromatic Lantern off the top. They then recast Ramos, and swing Melix at Max, who takes the hit. My turn has me mutating a Sawdust Demolisher and targeting Ramos with it. But unfortunately MJ responds to it while it's on the stack by cracking the flooded strand they'd played earlier to go and find a volcanic island. They then cast Ojutai's Command to counter the creature spell and draw a card. This has Ramos and Kalamax also getting some counters. I then try and mutate Insatiable Hemophage onto Ramos. This gives my Ramos a plus one plus one counter and then as it resolves, drains my opponents each for one. With nothing else, I pass to Max. Max taps enough for a Stoic Angel, getting a treasure from his Thievery trigger, and then using the Thievery Hideaway trigger to cast a hidden spell for Wooburg, and puts out a Smothering Tithe. With nothing else, Max passes turn. Nick draws, but doesn't pay the two, and Max makes treasure. He then activates Simone to draw a card, and casts a Gyre Engineer, passing turn. MJ untaps and Nick reveals his game plan. Uh, well, the old five color Simic. <laughs> MJ then plays a Mana Confluence return and tells Max that they didn't pay the two as they drew a card. MJ then casts Timur Charm, putting three plus one plus one counters onto Ramos and has their dragon fight my dragon. Thankfully, my dragon has Death Touch, and before the spell resolves, MJ removes five plus one plus one counters to float two of each color of mana. The Ramoses then both die. and MJ uses some of that mana to cast Cloven Casting, and then puts out a Sunforger. They then equip it onto Melek. They're not done for turn though, playing a Commander's Sphere before they pass. My turn has me drawing, and not paying the two, and Max makes a treasure. I play a Tap Prairie Stream, and I probably should have paid the two, as I pass to Max. Max draws, and recasts his copy of Ramos. He follows up with a brazen upstart, giving Ramos 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and passes to Nick. Nick untaps, and draws, not paying the 2. He casts a Mirage Mirror, which is always great to see, and passes turn. At the end of turn, MJ casts Golgari Charm off the top of their library thanks to Melek, and gets a copy. They blow up the Tithe, and Max's Thievery with the spells, and move to their turn. 
MJ untaps and draws. They play a forest and recast Ramos quite easily thanks to Marari's wake. They then swing Melek at me and I take the hit and we move to my turn. I take two in my main phase by playing a godless shrine untapped and tap out entirely to cast Ramos. I then pass to Max. Max taps 7 mana for Karthus, and MJ responds by sacrificing the sphere to draw a card. They reveal Gruel Charm off the top, which is pretty funny. Continuing to respond to Karthus being on the stack, MJ then casts the charm off the top and gets a copy of Melek, and pays to copy it with the Cloven Casting, getting a third copy. The mode they picked was to deal 3 damage to Flyers, which has a total of 9 damage being dealt. There are then no dragons for Max to steal as Karthus enters, and Max then goes to combat. He swings Karthus at MJ. MJ takes the hit, and Max passes turn. At the end of turn, Nick activates Zimone's second ability, and draws 2 cards because he's 8 or more lands. Nick draws for turn, and plays Command Tower. He then has a Mirage Mirror become a copy of the Shaman of Forgotten Ways, and Nick taps a bunch of mana to activate the Shaman's second ability, aka Biorhythm on a body. MJ responds to this by activating Sunforger and attaching it to go and find a spell from their library. They are limited to red or white spells that cost 4 or less, and MJ grabs and casts Jun Charm. They pick the mode to deal 2 damage to each creature, this wipes the board of most creatures but Karthus, and Nick and I die to the Shaman trigger as it resolves. MJ then needs only hit Max for 1, which they can do easily, and Max scoops it up knowing he's done for. Game review time. So this one is a lot of fun, and big thank you to MJ, Max, and Nick for surprising me with this on my birthday. It was really cool to see, and I wasn't really too sure what to expect. I know you all have seen my Ramos deck in action and know it's Mutate deck, but it was cool seeing three other versions at the same time. MJ's version was obviously Lucky Charms because you saw like every single charm in existence, not to mention the commands. Nick, well, kind of revealed it by saying that he built it around Simic, which was basically an excuse for him to play Fable of the Wolf and the Owl. And I'm not too sure what Max actually had built in the end. He used to play a five color god deck, so I think it might have been something related to that, but we'll have to get him to confirm. I did think that Max's Karthus tech was particularly spicy because if it had resolved, I think it would have been really interesting to see how the game would have developed. That being said, it was even more incredible to see MJ go off like that with the biorhythm trigger on the stack. I would not have figured out that line, and it was beautiful to see. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.